What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to The Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys, what is going on? It's of course Jay Campbell with the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very, very excited today to be joined in my virtual Zoom studio with the one and only Michael Jaco. Michael, it's amazing to have you again. How are you, brother? Ah, uh, doing great, Jay. Thanks for having me again. Yes, should be a good good time tonight. <laughs> well, so first off, uh, let me just say that obviously this is part two. Michael and I did a deep dive um, a couple of weeks ago. His first podcast is going to run next Monday. This is now Thursday, August 6th. And then his this one we're doing now will run the following week's proceeding. So I think that will be like the 18th. So the 11th and the 18th. And uh, I already know from part one that this is going to be astonishing just as part one or part, uh, part two will be just as astonishing as part one. So where we left off on the last podcast is we really spent a lot of time going over your career. You know, we did a deep dive of some of the amazing things that you've experienced as a 24 year Navy SEAL. And then of course, as an analyst, we talked about some of your remote viewing experiences, but we saved the best for part two, which is obviously what we're going to talk about today which is essentially the secret space program. And as I told you, I want to read this quote from Jacques Fillet, who's probably in the UFO or ufology community and sector, the best, most learned researcher, right? And in fact, this quote was in the amazing Pierre Sabak's book, Holographic Culture. So this is, and again, he's talking about um, the study into alien contract, which is where we're going, the secret space program, right? He says the phenomenon function I'm sorry, the phenomena function like an operational system of symbolic communication at a global level. There is something about the human race with which they interact and we do not know what it is. They are part of the environment. They're part of the control system for human evolution. But their effects, instead of being just physical, are also felt in our beliefs. They influence what we call our spiritual life. They, they affect our politics, our history, and are no doubt affecting our culture. They are a feature of our past and undoubtedly a part of our future. And that's from his book, Dimensions, a case book of alien contact, which was published by the way in 1996. So with that quote, being the 24 year Navy SEAL, being this specialist remote viewing guy that worked in the CIA, being in active duty missions, all this incredible stuff that you've experienced in your life, talk about the secret space program. All right, so it came to me, you know, I started hearing, you know, uh, Carrie Cassidy, you know, Project Camelot type stuff. Uh, and I'd hear her talking to some guys who were like, you know, super soldiers and stuff right. like that. I'm like, oh, man, that sounds pretty cool, you know? And uh, more and more of those guys sort of coming out. Now there's like a huge group of them that are out. And I was like, wow, that's, those guys are pretty cool. So as I started, you know, releasing my information on the intuitive warrior and the waking of a warrior and stuff like that, I would do talk shows like this and some of those people were, you know, part of that program and they would ask me, do you have memories? And I would be like, no, but kind of did, you know, I wasn't really ready to, you know, face that. It's kind of like, you know, we see a lot of people right now. You talk about deep state people are like, what's deep state, you know? So, <laughs> yeah, you know, but uh, I mean, for us, it's like, you know, we're so into it and we know so much about it. It, sure. it surprises me that there's not more people into it. It's kind of like, you know, um, uh, you know, aliens and stuff like that are, uh, you know, people are like, when are, when are they going to have the disclosure? It's like this disclosure. It's like, God, it's been ongoing for like ever. Right. Exactly. For guys like us, we're already aware of it, but for most people, they're waiting for the news flash. <laughs> You know, <laughs> so they're, wa they're waiting for the ABC and CNN guys. They're, they're waiting for the guy on Fox, what's his name at night, uh, whatever, you know, to come out and say, on he's head. landed. On head comes out and says, <laughs> Sean right, you know, use alert, use alert. The aliens, well, he's like, you and I are ready for Sean Harrington to tear off his mask. He's going to talk to me, and, you know, 
So uh, you and I are ready for Hannity to tear off his mask to reveal a reptilian being. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> you know, you, we see all these shows and we see all these movies, uh, science fiction, and we're like, oh, that's like just, you know, so out there, so outlandish, right. but we're like mesmerized by it, like right. Star Wars and, right. you know, uh, Star Trek and all these different shows. But maybe in the back of our mind, we're like, maybe that's out there, you know? Something and people are that. starting to open their minds that maybe with these trillions of planets that are out there throughout not just our galaxy, but other galaxies and so forth. Right. Maybe there's some other life out there. So I started to get into that very, very early age. Um, so just leaping off real quick. So I started to have memories come through. Just like uh, when I started doing uh, past life regressions and going to psychics and finding out information, it started opening things up within me. Yeah. And I was like, wow, I, I think I was one of those super soldier guys, you know, that everybody seems to be telling me that I was. So do you think some of those guys then when they were attempting to talk to you like, bro, you don't remember. Exactly. And you didn't remember yet. I didn't remember yet. So they're like, don't, you know, it's just <laughs> your parents tell you, you remember that time where you're like, you were sitting right next to me. Yeah, I know. Exactly. You yeah. know, so I don't remember that. And then you, you like see the pictures and you're like, Oh, oh, I guess yeah. it really was. I did do that, you know? It's so, like, dude, I got to ask you. Very yeah. important question. Were they clockwork oranging all of you guys at all times? Um, as some people are. Now, I've seen in, in the SEAL teams, I've seen people like that that were clockwork orange, all right? They would go off the missions, and they have, like, that, that right. veil that right. came over. They go off to a mission, come back. And, and then the veil is lifted and they're like, and they're like, you're, you're thinking because you know, not to ask, you're thinking, where do those guys go and what happened there? You know? So, but well, you know, dude, it's like, it's like men in black, right? I mean, they fucking you know, showed us, they got a device. Like, yeah, I don't remember anymore. So that stuff is going on. Right. I mean, we've seen, you know, MK ultra stuff. And that's, right. that's not to say that I or any of the guys that I work with were like that, but, um, uh, I know that those programs go on. I mean, it happens, I, see yeah. it, I see it in general society right now, you know? Oh yeah. It's just, it's sad. Very sad. I mean, the news basically is, is constantly doing that. So I, I started opening up to it and I, I started to remember, uh, things that happened in my, my childhood. And, uh, my mother would say stuff that was like, what, you know, and I'd have these visions and stuff, even as a child. And uh, as a, I remember as a 12, 13 year old, somewhere around in there, I had like a visitation of myself from a future, from a future. Wow. And, it, and I was like, it happened. I was like, I'm seeing this. I know I'm seeing this. And it was kind of like, I just kind of popped in to let, let myself know that, you know, this time stuff is happening. Right. You're going to see. And so the way I am right now is what I remember when I was 13, what I looked like when I came in and visited myself briefly. Wow. So then st stuff started opening up to me. I had uh, uh, Rebecca Shaw of uh, Charleston Hypnotherapy who, who did past life regressions with me. And by the way, I recommend past life regressions for anyone and anyone that has the inability to sleep or is like anxious all the time because there's a block, right? It's an unintegrated yeah. trauma. And it could be something, a lot of times it's just a hypnotherapy right. and trauma that's in your current life. I mean, you, you want to get smoking and all kinds Absolutely of crazy stuff. Right. Way, you know, hypnotherapy is the way to go. But for some of this, it can be used to go into past lifetimes. Right. So she basically cooked me into uh, past lifetimes after many psychics say, told me that I was this, this, and this. And I was like, oh, I got to go see. And then I thought that, you know, that would be the next step. And it was. So I contacted her. Uh, just recently, because I've been having all these memories come through, and I said, "Hey, do you have you ever worked with anybody in the secret space program?" She's and I thought I, she was gonna like flip out and go, "What are you talking about?" You know, but she's like, "Oh yeah, I've worked with this person, this person, this person." Wow. This person. Like, oh my god! Wow. Oh yeah. So she she regressed me into a concurrent life that I'm having in the secret space program. So wow. it's kind of it's trippy, but there's ways that that happens. It's uh, they basically take a piece of your consciousness, uh, your energy, soul energy, and they place it in a body that they duplicate from your DNA and everything. Right. Cloning. 
right? They have that tech. Yep. In, in a way, but it's it's a a clone. Usually, is like you know doesn't have any kind of soul energy. Right, 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 right. But um, this is basically replicating a uh, uh, a body that your soul energy actually incarnates into, just like wow. just like we are right now. Wow. And uh, so they have what's called a twenty and back program. A lot of a lot of people right. come forward and talk about them. Yep. So normally you do a 20 and then they regress you back from the point where they took you and, it, and go, you know, and then everything's like blank. And then you get into like your fifties, like I did, and things start to open up to you because right. I think you become more aware, you know, you spiritually, internally, yes. uh, you know, you kind of start to tap into, uh, you know, your book of records right. and, uh, and, and so forth. So that's what was happening with me. So I remember being inserted as a three-year-old, believe it or not. Wow. So when I did this, uh, this parallel regression thing, uh, I had, had the memory of they came to my mother and said, hey, we notice when your son came in that he has a lot of light. He's, he's, he's an advanced soul. So we want to put him in this program. And she agreed to it. And they said, oh, and by the way, after we put him in this program, uh, we take some of his soul energy and put it in there neither one of you are going to know anything about this. So she's like, okay. So she, they went to, you know, did the, did the sweep. And uh, so uh, here I am having memories come through of them basically training me and they like to bring um, young souls in because we don't have all the right. baggage, you know, coming in. Cause they, they don't teach us right here. <laughs> you know? No, 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 uh, no, no. Educational systems, all, all discombobulated, sure. yeah. all the information, the mathematical science, everything is, is taught to keep us dumbed down. Right. So, uh, I mean, the news organization, the polit political structures, all these structures are basically like religious religions. Right. You know? Right. And, uh, they want us to worship them. Right. And ideally as a, uh, you know, separate entity, we should never worship anything. Right. We should be our own. E everything is found inside. Right. Yeah. yeah. So we should be informed, and uh, learn how to do our own connection with divine source and so forth. So within that program, they train me. Um, some of the highlights that are starting to come through, uh, the craft that we work that we work on is uh, super advanced. Now this this advanced technology, some of it was um, uh, secreted in uh, Antarctica uh, back during Atlantean Atlantean time frame. Uh, Lemurian time frame, we were more advanced than we are even right. now. Of course. And uh, there was a, you know, cataclysmic event. Some of the uh, the Luciferian types came in, took over, like we've talked about, you know, yep. um, Draconian uh, came in and, you know, basically took control of our planet and our consciousness a lot of, in a lot of a lot of places. Some of us are awakening, like we're talking about right now. And honestly, by the way, Sabak literally just confirmed it all. And, you know, he refers to them as the seraphic reptilian Lord hosts, which wow. are hidden. Yeah, no, he confirms that this is their planet. They came in and commandeered this planet, as you've said. Wow. And they, they also commandeer other planets, but this is their property. Yes, yes. And we are their property. Yes. They consider us their property, even though we are... Um, considered you know like i said our own being exactly they consider us they're like cattle you know exactly and uh so the part of uh the waking up process is to break free from that right and uh what we're doing right now is trying to help more and more people do that because the exactly. more people break free we reach that tipping point and that 51 percent and that destroys their whole agenda hundred percent. And by the way, cattle, there's no coincidence is they look at us really as chattel, right? Which is tradable financial instruments through our birth certificates, which obviously you and I and Robert will talk about on next Monday night's podcast. But I mean, it's all there, dude. Yep. Yep. You're just tying it all together. So the secret space program, of course, in the, in the space program, it's not secret, but for us, it's secretive. So out, out on that level, it's like wide open. So Antarctica, there were some uh, craft from Atlantis, like I was talking about. We finally reached a consciousness level uh, just before World War II. And they went in and actually started tapping out the Germans to uh, start this program. And the Germans, uh, you know, went, you know, deep into it. They had uh, um, uh, 
Nordics that were helping them out and stuff like that. But they started inserting their negative views within that program. So the Nordics came to us and uh, us being in America and started having some of us uh, uh, inserted in their program. And so this has been kind of like a little tit for tat that's been going on, but eventually uh, it moved into uh, from here on earth into uh, the dark side of the moon. And then from the dark side of the moon, it started to move to the other bases that are on other, other planets. Like Mars, right? Yeah, like Mars, internally in Mars. Most of the, By the way, do you remember your train? Like, who was training you? Were they humans or were they Draco or what were they? Do you remember? A uh, little bit of all. So yeah. I don't remember Draco training us, but I do remember like Grays. They're little sure. Grays. And all obviously, the Grays are just the biobots of the Draco anyway, right? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, and they're just uh, slaves to them as well. So and are they, by the way, are they, if you can remember, and I don't know if you can, but are they really hypnotically controlled or are they um, like self-propelling and self-powered consciously? Uh, they, they are consciously self-powered, but like a lot of us, they are mind controlled. Right, right. And, and that's coming and from that hive mind control. Draco, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they do what they're told. Right. And, and the Draco is all hive minded and they've showed that that showed us that in the movies like um, the what is Independence Day in part two. Exactly. T that's how they're telling us. Yeah, it's a hive mind. Yeah. And they're trying to capture our minds as well, our consciousness. And they have done, you know, a fairly good job of that, obviously. Yeah. And uh, so that's that's the thing that we were trying to break free from. Right. So in that program, we basically um, uh, don't have the restrictions that we do here. Uh, I can actually communicate with spacecraft mentally, right? Because uh, some of the spacecraft actually have a consciousness. Believe no, that's right. exactly what Valley says in all his oh, books. Wow. That you know the ufology phenomenon is literally a conscious phenomenon, and that's why you can never ever see these crafts materialize because it's a consciousness, it's a construct, and a vibrational aspect, right? So, like, you have to be elevated to even connect with them. Wow, that's absolutely so that's that's my memories that come through so you have to be trained to raise your consciousness if you don't have your consciousness raised these craft and the weapon systems that can't are, even be can't even be used right they, yeah. they won't they won't even connect with you right. so like some of the guys that are negative um no chance it's it's harder for them there there are craft that still relate to them and they can they can fly them but they don't have like like for us being in a love vibration, our consciousness is like, wham, like so yeah. super fast. Whereas those guys are restricted because that, that dark consciousness, and they think that anger and fear gives them power and stuff like that. And in some ways it does, but on the consciousness level of love, peace and joy and stuff like that, and connection to divine source on a very, very high level, um, then your, your consciousness is just so far beyond them. And that's what they hate. Right. They hate that we can like surpass them. And that's why they try and keep us in fear, keep us down. And there's also a karmic um, retribution. They understand that. So the, the karmic thing, when they do something evil, they know that it's going to come back to them. Absolutely. So what do they, do? they have their minions do the evil for them. So a lot of people that are like, you know, shaming on the masks and all this kind of stuff, they're basically doing their work for him because if they came out and really pushed that, they build some karma and they know that. So this is the thing that's real. Dude, it would it would blow everyone up if they could just get this little piece right here. So it's like you said. I mean, like their 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 subliminal mind control is so powerful that they literally make people think the opposite to carry out the behaviors that they are willfully wanting to do, but won't because of the karmic retribution. Right, exactly. Now, of course, they they get to a point where they're like, you know, I don't care. You know, I'm still going to, you know, do the child sacrifice thing. Right, and, and right. Room and all that kind of stuff. Right. That's only the very, very top percentage that do right. that. Because right. they have to work their, their way up to that point. And well, so I asked Sabak on that today. And, you know, he's guessing and he doesn't know. But, you know, the question really becomes is like, okay, so these, in these satanic rituals with these elites, and obviously the elites are – high level military, high level government, high level celebrities, whatever, you know, royal families, whatever. 
you know, at these events when they're sacrificing the child, they're drinking, they're harvesting the adrenochrome, they're drinking the blood, they're having sex, whatever they're doing. Do you think these reptilian beings show up in physical manifestation or do they just control their minds? Uh, I think there's a little bit of both. That's what he said too. Oh, really? Okay. Interesting. <laughs> okay. He said that's what he, I mean, again, assumptive, assumptive, you know, based on the etymological religion or uh, etymological interpretation of root language. He thinks exactly. it's both that they do show up as physical beings, but yep. they also can control the minds because they've mastered the wave form. They control this particle duality reality that we have in physical. Right now in the, uh, the space program, they don't, they don't, they don't do that as much. In fact, they want to like induce fear to us sure. out there. Right. Uh, that's, that's why a lot of us have to go through uh, programs where our bodies are built up. Uh, we take uh, special supplements and stuff like that. And they have ways to like, you know, keep us, keep us at 35 for, you know, pretty much ever. That's what I've heard. I've, I, I've read stories that they have stuff that literally eliminates physical death, right? Or extends right. physical life for literally forever. Forever. Absolutely. So, um, well, again, and then outside of this dimension, gone. there is no time. Right. So, I mean, like, why wouldn't they be able to do that if they have that technology? But we totally play with time, big time. Cause you can, uh, we, we go on missions where, you know, we jump in a wormhole, go to another, you right. know, uh, galaxy and, come back and we come back so that it's like we've only been gone for like a few minutes or something e amazing. even though we're gone all day you know so amazing. it's it's all of that stuff is 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 being played out there on uh on a very high level the uh the spacecraft are like tremendous i mean they're cities they're floating cities right it's, you know like and by the way they've materialized in physical because there's images right we've seen images in china of these floating cities Right. It's truly our spacecraft probably projecting the city, floating city, city as the image, what they really are, sh ships. Yeah. So I, I was actually out on uh, Lake Tahoe last year and uh, kayaking around the lake. And uh, the whole time I'm thinking that I'm going to have, I'm just, I'm thinking I'm going to have a, an encounter, you know. And uh, before I left, I took a picture like of the, of the background, the sky to like, you know, prove, okay, because I did it in 24 hours. So here it is at 10 o'clock, boom, at night, took a picture. And there was like, in a, and when I looked at it later, there, there in the background was like a, you know, a, a starship. So wow. I'm almost finished. I'm like a couple hours out from finishing. And I get this feeling and I look up and there's like this tremendous craft above me. And I go, I see it flash lights like that and the next thing i know i'm like i'm in the boat again like facing forward i'm like what and i look up and it's like Whoop. so i kind of have wow. memories of going up there and uh you know have a little conversation with them so it's uh it's it's something that i think a lot of us uh have been uh involved in the 20 and back program you know I've, i'm on my third cycle uh that's that's my uh by the way does your mom have any conscious recollection of any of this well, I can't really ask her now. She passed away, but uh, she oh, was. I'm sorry. I didn't all know that. Into, uh, she was all into this stuff, so it's interesting. So Tracy, she probably my, did. Tracy, my wife is like she's been into this. Oh yeah. Than I am. She's like trying to clue me up. All yeah, time. she's very advanced, man. I was going to tell you that she's watching the podcast today. Today, no, but I mean, you know, she sent me some messages and stuff. So I know she's extremely advanced, especially with angelics yeah. and stuff. So it's cool. But I mean, so is my wife, bro. So it's like you know, like attracts like. Yeah. I mean, you know, they, they kind of help us out because we're kind of totally. like, you know, we're knuckleheads. We're like very physical guys. And, Knuckle draggers. Yeah, exactly. Knuckle draggers. So they're on that level where they kind of like help us <laughs> to be not so dumb. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I think I, I think of myself as highly intelligent, but, uh, you know, and, and tapped into a lot of stuff. But, you, right. know, our, you know, our women basically help us. Uh, well, they you know, have a totally different energy. They represent creation energy. And we represent like, again, you know, Walter Russell talks about this. Like we are the positive construct and they are the negative construct. But negative is the creation, right? Exactly. So it's like, you know, it's like the ball or the spiral or the sphere, you know, like the, what's the little arc of um, the, the, Fib the Fibonacci spiral, the golden spiral, the mean, you know, they are the architect of creative energy, which is like the negative force, but we're the positive force. And we have to be aligned and coalesce to actually have a relationship. I mean, there's a lot to that, like sexual functioning. And like, if you're with the wrong partner, like how bad it really is, because when you create a being, 
if you're not aligned, you know, electrochemically, it's bad, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, once you get into the, the energies of everything, I mean, it's all the way back to um, uh, Atlantean, Egyptian time. Egyptians, frame. yeah. They knew that. They knew that stuff. They knew it deeply. And Bro, so they wouldn't even allow couples to unite unless they had the right star charts, unless they had the right astrological charts. Because at, at the end of the day, we really are, as you said, we're just nothing more than energy. Like I talk about all the time, and we're affiliated with the energies of the stars. Yeah, you know? Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. So, uh, you know, they were into it. They were into the energy. So, you know, the orgasm and stuff. If you oh, knew all how that. To know how to use that energy, creation energy Horrible. Uh, in your life, they, they were all into that. They taught that in their temples and so forth. So, um, That's and- why men who are like, you know, having sex later in their life with all sorts of beings, people, you know, I, mean, I don't want to go into it, but you know, they're having sex with animals. I mean, there's so much crazy shit like that energy that you're, you know, positioning out there is so destructive for right. creation itself. I mean, I mean, again, dude, that's like something that that's a whole nother podcast, but like, you know, very few people talk about the power of sex energy, but obviously, you know, Crowley, you know, blood, sex, ritual, magic. I mean, that's, they knew about the power of orgies and all this crazy shit that they were doing because that creation energy is profoundly powerful especially if put to bad use and obviously with pa- parsons and, and you know this gets into the secret space program too but with parsons and l ron hubbard and and uh and crowley i mean they were summoning you know beings into this dimension through you know ritual sex magic orgies and sacrifice yeah. and all that shit yeah bad bad stuff so yeah there's uh d- demonic level you know right. stuff on uh different inter- energetic levels uh i I deal with that energy and so forth. Um, I deal with that energy in uh, the space program as well. Um, there's a, <clears throat> what they call the project looking glass. Right. Talk and, about that. Yeah. So I've, I've been involved in that. And uh, what that is is basically it's uh, evolved over time. It's more of a, a same thing. It's a consciousness thing. You have to be trained to basically, you know, communicate with it. Um, once you're trained to communicate with it, uh, you can, I remember being chipped and my chip basically uh, would communicate. I'd consciously communicate with it and see future events as they're unfolding. And it's, it's very similar. If we go back in time to the ancient Greeks, they would have like the, you know, the priest or priestess, you know, before they went out to battle and they didn't have it at the battlefield. They'd like be sacrificing goats and look at the right. intervals. It was like, oh, it's not a good time to fight yet. And everybody's like, you know, cooling the thumbs up. How about now? So then they're like, you know, another sacrifice. Right. It's, it's that way in the, in, the, in the space program as well. So when we're going into a battle, guys like myself um, will inform everybody, no, it's not, this is, this is the way it's going to work. And it's, we have to leave at this time frame. Now, the elite, if we want to call them that, or the, uh, you know, dark entities that try and control them and really right. do control us right they have that program as well but it's not as uh like i said your consciousness on the love level is far more advanced right ability to tap into that and actually influence a future event is far more powerful than what they'll ever experience and that and by the way that's the hundred monkey syndrome right when we get enough right. people vibrating right up here we can literally change everything and and we will, yeah. So that's that's on our timeline. Um, but you know, the dark forces like we're seeing right now with Beirut and all these other attacks, it looks like they're having they're doing right now. They're oh yeah, catching- all the fires, the fires in the Brussels building today, bro. I already said it. I put it on Twitter. They're burning that building because it warehouses so much of the UN government satanic pedophilia activities. It's that's why they're burning. It's the same shit as back in two thousand and one. I know. You remember right the day they before. Said, are they going to like drop that building in its footprint? You know, the first time ever. Well, I mean, that- remember like people forget, uh, but Rumsfeld, dude, Rumsfeld testified in Congress the day before that yep. three trillion dollars went missing, and we don't know how it happened. And then, boom, nine <laughs> eleven. So there's always something. So we're probably on the precipice of something major about to happen again because you're right. They've been burning. They've been literally fire and. Pierre talked about this today. They've been fire satanic rituals in the last 36 to 48 hours all over the globe. Giant fires. Yeah. So for us, you know, just the average person, we're like, okay, what, what, what are these pieces of puzzle? What do they relate to, you know? 
it takes us a little time. But fortunately, Trump and, uh, you know, the White Hats, they're, you know, many chess moves ahead of them. They're like, okay, we know they're going to do this. And, and then we're just like going to, you know, corral them into this and they're not going to get away with but just so much, you know, so. By the way, something that will blow your mind. And obviously you were way over this before me, but uh, Sabak said today that the orange fake tan that is all over Trump all the time is actually the remnant of the battle regalia of the Carabim Frodo human angels of light. Nice. Yeah. So we're like, whoa, you know, Robert was like, whoa, you know, so it's like, it pretty much proves that even though it's back and forth and, you know, sometimes we don't know what side Trump is really representing, he's in such a dark web of breakaway civilizations, right? Dark mm -hmm. angels, good angels, you know, and I don't know, what do you call it? Like neutral beings who are all vying for the power of this planet, right? Because we know the reptiles really truly own this planet. Um, right. you know, are just, it's constant back and forth. But I think to me, that's proof that what you've been saying and others have been saying that Trump is eventually going to show this planet that he has been working for a group that wants human beings to be vibrating here. Yeah. So that, that has to happen. And the reason why, like, you know, you and I know, and I've been studying for, for most of my life, right. Is that there's a planetary source. Exactly. People, Yep. Never crew that comes through every so often. I believe they've been holding it off for quite some time because it was due to come through already. Right. And, uh, they've right. been holding it off so that consciousness can reach a certain level so that when it does come through, we just like go to the next dimension. So do you think they're holding it off through the Hadron Colliders, right? They're literally manipulating time, the space-time continuum, so that, you know, it hasn't actually come through and upset the apple cart, so to speak, as it always does every 2,600 or 3,200 or whatever years it is. Is that really how they've been manipulating it, you think? Yeah, yeah. So they, the same thing, you know, the uh, Project Looking Glass, you can look at it and go, okay, when it comes through, this is what happens. Right. We don't want that. So speed it up. Let's look at the future. Okay, the future, if we hold it off, just like a math mathematical equation, we right. hold it off and we get that map of consciousness. We get, you know, 3.2 billion there. And then we like, you know, we – we're, we're out. We're good. We're out of this. Right. We're out of this bullshit, you know? Right. So right now, maybe we got like, you know, one and a half billion. Can, can we get it to like, you know, three, whatever it is, you know, however many billion people we have here on earth, can we get hit that 51% tipping point in time? Um, I believe that we do. Um, that's, that's my, when I view, cause I'm, you know, can look into the future sure. stuff. Um, I see that we make it, right. but these next few months are going to be just Critical. like right now. Very, Critical. very crazy. Um, they're going to pull out all the stops. And people, by the way, Michael, are waking up. I mean, just since you and I formally met, you know, in this physical uh, incarnation, which was about, what, six weeks ago, yeah. um, you know, I've seen tremendous shifting and changing in people just like, you know, like you said, like, who have sent me emails. I mean, I've written emails about it. Like, Oh my God, I watched Michael Jaco and you know, I served and like, you know, I, I've always loved you because of your optimization stuff, but like, I'm really tuned into this now. And then I watched your video with Michael and it was like, Oh my God, it just activated something. So dude, you're right. People are waking up. So, I mean, I think you're right. I mean, it just, but the work is still to be done. And as you've already said, you've already seen there will be darkness before dawn. They are going to create chaos. And whatever they want to do, burning cities, you know, dissonant, whatever nonsense. But I'm, I'm, I'm with you, dude. It's, it's a positive outline and timeline. But enough of us have to really do the work to go within and, you know, serve and be kind and send love bubbles and all these amazing things to you. But it is happening, dude. I, I'm totally with you now. People are waking up in mass. Yeah, in mass. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. Because, I mean, if we just go back, like, you know, maybe five, six months ago, it wasn't anything like this right now. The pedophilia. I mean, no one even knew about pedophilia. I was like, are you kidding me? Bro, that it's, article that I sent you and Robert. About the, uh, you know, the, the, the space brothers and sisters, you know, they're once, once people start to wake up to that, which they they are, they're like ready. And then when it happens, just like the pedophilia stuff, everybody's like, so aware of it. It's like, bam, like, okay, we're aware of this. We don't want this anymore. Let's get right. this behind us. You know, let's fix right. this. And that's right. good. So that allows the next level to come through. And that's where we're right at that cusp where we understand 
all that stuff, you know, that all these people, I mean, there's so many books on, you know, uh, space program that's right. going on out there and right. all these people who have, you know, contact and people seeing spacecraft going on spacecraft. I mean, it's just so much information. It's overwhelming the controllers. Right. You know, that's so exactly they're, right. they're like, okay, we're going to like, you know, allow, you know, UFO information that we've been studying for like 50 years. What? Wait, 50 years. You've been holding this back on us. Why? You know, come on. Right. So well, that's now, what Sabak said that today in the podcast to echo with you. He literally said that the reality is, is that quantum waveform computing, which as you now is exploding. Yes. That, that information is proliferating at a rate and speed that the controllers, whoever they are, the reptiles and their minions, the dark fallen angels, they cannot suppress it like they once could. And so it's just now an eventuality and an inevitability that we do get enough of us up here. It's just, as you said, it's an, it's do, do we do it in a, in a relative timeline that doesn't explode this thing and reboot everything? Right. So the, um, the consciousness thing is, is like just so amazing. The, the quantum shift, the quantum thinking, you can even see it like uh, when we speak, because you and I like occasionally go back and forth in a five, five dimensional reality oh, right. and pull information down. Usually when that happens, and I've been on a lot of talk shows and I've talked to a lot of people, I have a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching sure. and stuff that I do. When I go into that, because there's like a, a control level throughout our, our, our system and uh, throughout Earth that's put up there by, you know, the reptilians. Yeah. And uh, when we reach certain levels, it starts to, um, you know, cause a, a, like a scramble. Yeah, like a temporal disorder. Yeah. And, like we cut off or it's like start to, so we saw that in, you know, a right. couple of our shows already, yep. but that's what's happening. Now in this show, I've only seen it happen once. So that's, that's outstanding. So that means like, just like we're talking about. We're getting closer. We're learning how to move in that environment, pull that information out without letting them like scramble it. And because we're reaching a certain level of consciousness, they're getting overwhelmed. They can't, they can't do it all because right. there's so many of us now that that energy is just getting blown. Those circuits are getting blown. Right. The uh, reptilian elite that have been controlling everything in society are getting, you know, tapped out. They're going to, okay, the tap is coming. Time for you to go, <laughs> you know. And then we don't see him anymore. We see a clone or a body double or we just see, you know, computer animated stuff. So a lot of these guys are gone. So, and more and more are going. It's the only thing that makes sense now, dude. You know, yeah. it's like you said, like, it's, but it is up to us as leaders in this space right now to truly continually to manifest this, you know, this golden age by our thoughts. You know, again, I use your stealing from you, you know, the love bubble stuff, you know, I mean, I've always been like courageous, kind, concerning, serving, but now I'm like, as I put in my email on Monday, I'm like, have you sent a love bubble to someone that you find is either, um, you know, a conscientious objector to this or even just an enemy? or someone yeah. in your past that, you know, you know, blocked you, send them love bubbles. I mean, that's how important it is because love, as you know, conquers everything. Oh God. Yeah. And it, and it shuts down the energy of uh, the negative guys. Exactly. Makes them weak makes them vulnerable. And, uh, and once they're weak and vulnerable, then they get taken out, you know, because exactly. these guys are like, you know, a lot, I, I hear so many people say, how can like our leaders do this is it's because they're psychopaths period you know get to that understanding they're trained to be psychopaths they don't care about us and, and, and by the way if they are nephilim they don't even have a soul anyway if exactly. they're descend if they're descended from these beings that fallen angels having sex with real human women as sabat calls them proto human women then they don't even have a soul so they are built in psychopaths right very good very good wow i'm, I'm so glad <laughs> You had that had him on earlier. Yeah, I mean, and honestly, they're built in psychopaths. So, like, we, come in. they don't have empathy. They don't oh. even understand empathy. Yeah. You know, eating children, raping them, tearing them up, slicing their faces off, whatever these horrible people beings do, if they are Nephilim or descendant of Nephilim, they don't have a soul. Right. You now, know? we, you know, at, in the higher level of consciousness, law of vibrations, <clears throat> reasoning, and so forth. You know, we look at that and we go, oh, yeah, 
I would, there's no way I could even be around right. anything like that. But for them, it's, it's no problem. You exactly. Know? The they don't even have feeling. They don't even feel negative about it. And they're supposed to do that. They're expected to do that, you know? And, if and they bro, don't, they get high. I mean, they literally get high. Exactly. They feel better doing that. And again, yeah, I mean, I've always said that when I, didn't, when I wasn't as awake or as aware and I would be reading about pedophilia and child rape and, you know, just molestation. And I would, you know, as a man, I would think to myself, what kind of a man could have sex with a child? Mm-hmm. I know. But we, you know, we're, we're seeing that from a human, you know, quantum reality, and we're not seeing it from a being that doesn't have human humanity, which would be a soul or a heart. And they're just doing it, you know, for, you know, the warm and fuzzy. I mean, you know, the high, right. It's insane. I mean, but that's what adrenochrome is, right? Like you can even take a human that does have a heart and feed them that shit. And it shuts down the heart. It blocks the heart ventricle and, you know, empathy and they become, addicts to the, whatever that shit does to their brain exactly exactly yeah it's creating a bypass so they <clears throat> that empathy is gone from them uh permanently pretty much so unfortunately a lot of people want to like see them you know well maybe we can like you know help them it's like mm -mm, no uh i've been in combat and i've seen like pure evil people right uh, you, you can't convert them they're just so far into that and they believe in that so much and they've gone to so many different levels right. to achieve what they have. And, uh, you know, uh, I think there's a, uh, you know, a lot of new age stuff that basically traps people too, you know? Oh, absolutely, dude. I mean, mo we talked about that today on the show too. I mean, most wow. people in the new age movement are absolutely gone. Right. You know, they've been manipulated by the Luciferian regime. It's just the opposite. Right. You know, we were even talked about Luciferianism itself. It's a cult. And those people literally believe that Lucifer is a representation of a rebellion against authority. I mean, you know, you can Google and Wikipedia what it means and all these people. I mean, you know, look, dude, you already know this. Chelsea Clinton, Bill, I mean, uh, Bill Gates, his wife. These people have been photographed wearing an upside down cross. Right. They're very open about worshiping Lucifer. And mm -hmm. again, Lucifer, the light bringer, they think that Lucifer in their warped, deluded, non-empathetic minds, he is some sort of light bringing, you know, uh, enlightened being who represents like the, ab uh, the, uh, the antithesis of the absolute authority of the high God. I mean, it's insane how warped these people's brains are. Right. Very egotistical, just like we're talking about. No yes. empathy and so forth. So Narcissists. They, they see themselves as God. Exactly. So that's what we're seeing in our leadership or the attempt that's happening right now in a lot of leadership in a lot of areas right now where they're trying to say that we are God. You're going to do what we say. You're going to stay in your home. You're going to quarantine. You're not going to school. You're going to wear a mask. And we're going to put goggles on your face, too. Because that's what's going to happen when we go to our elections, because they're going to have masks and goggles and they're like trying, like, you know, stop us from having our election. So um, it's uh, because facial recognition, because the goggles will help those guys with facial recognition. So they put the mask on. That's been helping them. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why the Antifa and Black Lives Matter guys or having those masks on and those hoods. So, so let's talk about that. So, let, you know, we're about an hour into the show and let's just spend the next 15 to 20 minutes talking about, and obviously you're going to be on live with us Monday night and there's going to be millions more broadcasts with me and you, but like, here we are, it's August 6th. You have already remote viewed fires in the major cities. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you've told people, you know, that coach with you and also on your private broadcast that, you know, if you live in a major city and you're in a blue check state, you know, with these demonic demon crap, whatever you want to call them again, you know, and I hate classifying them as left and right. It's really, as you know, right. Marxist revolutionaries, subversives who want chaos and anarchy, who want to overthrow America. That's what they are. I don't care what party they represent because we both know there's Republicans who are wolves in sheep clothing that want the same shit because they're all in on it. But ultimately, you know, knowing that there are states that are like uh, me in California, you know, that are just so dark and so infected. Uh, and by the way, I haven't told you this, and this is good for you. Um, I did a, I shouldn't say it, but who cares? I'll do it. I did a consulting, a consult consultation with a very high level Google executive. And he's like, you know, nobody's going to know it's me, but he's like, we've already been told that 
we're not coming back to our place of work until August of 2021, right? So if there's anybody on the planet that controls, quote unquote, you know, the construct of time, it would be Google, right? I mean, they own internet, they own internet technology. And they're obviously through emergent systems, they're creating a reality anyway, but they're already, he's already telling me August of next year. So we know that the dark forces before they give up, if they are going to get out, if enough of us are going to end their reign, are going to lay down some pretty effed up stuff. So, you know, you already have said it on a podcast with me and Robert, but, you know, say it for this private podcast, like what are your strategies right now, you know, for people who can afford to move? And then even for people that can't afford to move, like what do you tell people right now that they should do to prepare? And again, not going into fear as you never do anyway, but like what are some really good proactive strategies that people should take right now? So looking at your your own place where you're at right now, I mean, we're seeing in like uh, New York and LA where they're basically, in New York, they're like starting to lock people down. They're gonna like give them $10,000 fine. Uh, they'll, they'll let like, you know, people uh, riot and burn the city and they won't do anything. But for those of us that are average citizens, they're gonna like, you know, come after us if we get out of line. And the same thing in LA where they're going to like, you know, shut your power and your water off if you're like <laughs> a group of people over at your house, you know? So it's, uh, it's getting to that point. So I see just like it's happening in New York right now. And I've said right. that for several weeks that they're going to start to shut these cities down and lock them down and, and uh, you know, create a cordon around them and make people stay. And the reason why that is, is some of the good people, they're going to use them as shields and they know that the uh, good guys aren't just going to come in and like hammer the crap out of them right. as long as there's good people in there, you know? Right. So um, that's going to happen in a lot of major cities. It's already like, you know, just so close to that cusp. I, I brought it up big time about uh, um, several cities. I'm not going to name their names uh, on my show and stuff like that. And then right. people got involved and stopped, you know, these Antifa guys, goons, basically from coming in and basically starting – you know, one of these little uh, makeshift cities, you know, that they're trying to set right. up in all the other cities. Right. In, in like so, that yeah. nonsense in Seattle chop or whatever that already right. has been disbanded. They're, they're trying to do that, you know, Portland, everywhere. So right. um, you need to look at, you know, escape plans, you know, if you can't get out, you know, uh, you got to have, you know, friends or relatives somewhere else, you know, that are in maybe a safe area, maybe in the country or something. I, I've already seen that, you know, I think, you know, leaving the cities, I think it's like 21% uh, sales, you know. Oh, record. yeah, the flight like, is already insane. I mean, I already told you we were looking. Already happening yeah. in the cities. We even saw that, you know, uh, Cuomo was like, oh, uh, millionaires, come back, you know. I'll, <laughs> yeah, I'll, right. I'll, have a, I'll, I'll get you a free beer. beer. Right. So he's starting to see that, yeah. you, know, the, you know, the elite, you know, the people that have the money that these guys, you know, claim that are evil. Uh, you got to have those guys around. Otherwise you're not going to be able to fund your little wars and stuff like that. With right. These so, so we're starting to see how that people are escaping. So the people with money are leaving the big cities. They're gone already. Right. right? So those of us don't have a lot of money. Um, the way, just look at your town. Like my town is a good town. You right. know? And I have, uh, I'm in contact with a lot of good people. So we're going to keep this town, town safe, you know, and yeah. uh, the police force that's here, the sheriff that's here, uh, on both sides because they live right on the cusp uh, in California and, and next to Nevada. Right. I know all the you know police and the sheriff and all that kind of stuff. So I'm good here. You need to know that. You need to know, like, take for instance New Jersey. Those guys that own Jim, and they got that sheriff coming in there and screwing with them. Right. That's a bad sheriff. That's right. not a good town to be in. Exactly. Right. Because right. he sees part of the deep state. He's going to do whatever they tell him to do. So if you're in a town, you know your sheriff, you got to get sheriff that's not listening to, you know, maybe a deep state mayor or governor or whatever, you should be okay, you know, and I say should be, still have, you know, plenty of food and water, you always got to have that. Um, maybe forms of protection, we're not going to go in, you know, you got to- Yeah, no, I mean, you know, I'm in California, we'll use me and you could say, you know, for example, we've already talked about this, but Robert Stanley is in 
Temecula Marietta, which is like, you know, special operator fucking haven, right? Like of, tons of, of ex-military. Of gone there, yeah. yeah. Right. Like, so you already know. So he's in a good area, right? Like that's a place in California that you can drive down the street at any time and see a giant Trump rally. There are not many places in California like that, right? So that's a safe place. Now, I live in West Covina. I have the means to leave. But right now, looking into the places that we want to go, we're kind of like, uh, there's really nowhere to go. There's no places to rent. We can't buy a house. You know, my wife and I have a very successful residential real estate company that is crushing right now. So where oh, I good. live, right, where I live right now, I'm right by um, – the tactical command of the LA County Sheriff's office, the LA County, the leader of LA County Sheriff's has already told Gil Garcetti to, you know what I'm saying? So like exactly. he's not being puppeted exactly. like the LAPD is. Now, obviously my wife's brother is a high level detective um, in uh, robbery homicide in LA. And I talk to him every day and he's already told me, he's like, Jay, there are giant groups of us who are not going to listen if they tell us to stand down. Yeah. Right. So, so, so we know that LA is not nearly as bad as New York, but again, it's a blue check city. We know that Gavin Newsom is literally Nephilim. So, so, I mean, we do know that there's risk here, but it's like, you know, at this point, I'm just looking at things and I'm saying, you know what, I have enough people in my neighborhood yeah. that are armed to the tooth are planned are prepped are listening to people like you. So, I mean, I think it does come down to like, what are you doing for due diligence? You know, always I have enough water. I always have enough dried food to last me a month. I mean, I've always been that way, but you know, and I'm not telling people to like go off the range and be a prepper, but we, we absolutely should bro be ready for anything to happen in the next three to four months. Correct. Absolutely. And Unfortunately, people are going to be surprised at the speed, I believe, that it's going to come How down. How fast it happens. It's going to happen. That, and that's, that's why a lot of people are like, well, if it gets bad, I'm just going to move. I'll be okay. Oh, you won't have a chance to move. Not going to have, no. Like I'm telling you. You'll be stuck. You're going to down these cities, and you're going to be trapped in them. So right. if, you, if you're in a bad city like New York, I've been telling all my friends. Oh, anybody of, still in New York City deserves what comes to them, bro. Well, you know, it's, it's unfortunate, but a lot of people are, you know, you know can't, don't have the means. But um, they really need to be looking at it. You know, they need, really need to be looking at, you know, if they got relatives somewhere else, maybe they're out of work there. Right. I don't know. It's like, well, just leave. You know? Well, let me ask you about that. So, again, this is prediction stuff for you, but you're pretty tapped in. Like, at what point does the financial collapse ensue? Because we both know that's coming. We already have seen the government now not extend the $625 benefit for all these people that have been living off those, right, who've lost their jobs. Bro, we don't even know. We get the number tomorrow, but, you know, the job loss. But, I mean, there's probably somewhere between 35 and 45 million people in America who have no income other than unemployment. Oh, now, yeah. if you live in California or New York or any high-cost area, you are living off of that extended, you know, benefit, which now has been discontinued. And if it does come, it ain't coming this month because they cannot rule – on a new benefit. And even if they do, let's say have an emergency session next week and they say, okay, we're going to extend it. Nobody's going to even get that payment until probably October. So it's going to get sketchy in my opinion in the next two months. Do you oh, think yeah. that's the first step that we have, you know, chaos or civil unrest because people have no, no money? Oh yeah. That's by design too, because the Democrats are, are holding up. Exactly. exactly. And they, they put in all kinds of like, you know, right. Up like gun control. Right, it's control. insane, dude. It's oh, insane. it's insane. So. It's all done to get chaos and anarchy because they already know that the, the clone that is running for them, which is obviously a patsy, it's like, you know, Robert said the other day, he's like, if you vote for Biden, you're actually voting for who's next in line because Biden isn't even going to last. No. He's not even going to the Democratic National Convention. What kind of a sham is that? I mean, anybody that's behind that guy at this point. But so is it right now just everything is their, their long range plan right now is to stop the election from happening? Because, bro, we both know no one's going to vote for Biden. Not real person. Well, that's, that's what they're trying to figure out because they've, uh, you know, already like, you know, put out that one uh, Cuban woman as a possibility because it, because that's what they do. Right. They're like, well, she might be, she might be, you know, the person. And then they watch and see what happens. And she just got crushed, you know, all her background. And like, it's like, no, <laughs> they're not. Because Biden was supposed to come out this, this week with his vice presidential pick. 
Is he going to come out tomorrow? He doesn't even know. But are they going to tell him who to say? You know, it's, well, it's insane. How does the presidential candidate for the Democratic Party, and again, I won't even call him Democrat, it's just a radical progressive left, right. not go to the convention? Yeah. I mean, it's insanity. Not go to the convention. <laughs> and what's, what's going on with these debates? You know, right. Trump, Trump just called their hand. It's like, let's do a fourth debate. I want a fourth <laughs> debate. <laughs> let's do it now. Let's start this thing because I hear people are already voting for him. I was but like, see, dude, the thing about the debates, and you proved this to me, and you were the guy that blew my mind and Robert's mind. I mean, you already showed that Hillary didn't even show up in a single debate, that they have literal doppelgaggers. Like even that famous debate, right, where Trump said, if I was president, Mrs. whatever she, he, she called it, oh, Senator Clinton, you wouldn't even, you'd be in jail, right? That wasn't right. even Hillary Clinton. She was already gone. Oh, yeah. Already gone. But people don't realize that because, again, the smoke and mirrors of Hollywood, right, mm -hmm. which is their, under their control, right. everything is fake. Yeah. There, there's no way to know. So uh, clearly, <laughs> Biden Hollywood, won't Hollywood show. Was Hollywood yeah. was beautiful, you know? With beautiful Biden's planet. not even going to show. They're going to have a doppelganger for Biden, whether it's a clone or a humanoid being or a robot or somebody that looks like him. He won't even be there. No. No, he's not, he's not going to be there. I mean, we've already seen, you know, the, uh, they've already done the, you know, the, the look at his, like, even his ear. You know, he, used, he, he used to have an ear that it wasn't attached, and now it's attached. And Dude, like, every single day, there is a soundbite from him that shows that he wow. is literally functionally retarded, meaning his, they've MK altered him to the point where he doesn't even function. And that's if he really even is alive, right? You've said that he might have already been executed. Yeah, I think he's gone. I think that's yeah. just a uh, clone. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's sad to watch whatever that is, you know, come on. It's just amazing that two people like me and you can literally have a conversation like this, and we're not joking. And, uh, and people that are asleep who watch this, which aren't many, because I don't have many sleepers following me, or you, you know, if they are a sleeper and they watch me and you say, oh, yeah, he's gone, he's cloned, he's executed, and they, you know, they, they don't even have a remote comprehension of what we're talking about. Yeah, but that's good. You know that if if they're if they hear it, question you you can't. Yeah, you're gonna hopefully you know have some kind of critical thinking. Just not shut it down. Oh, they're crazy. That that's fine too. You know, but um, I I think that this is uh, extremely important. I mean, we touched on like so many different uh, areas. We pushed some zones over the last you know couple times we talked. That if if anyone, because I know people that uh, are not awake. Or have family members that are my not, whole family, bro. My whole family. Yeah. So they have they have family members. They'll they'll like take this and hey, watch these guys. You know, look this guy's background. This guy's background. He does all these shows and blah blah blah. And they're like, they start watching. It's like really. It's like listen. And then that's wow. They make a lot of sense. You know. So um, you know. <laughs> well, that's what's so great. awesome. Is like you're a decorated. You, U.S. Navy SEAL and CIA analyst and amazing author. And I'm, you know, a quote unquote, F, you know, author. And so we have like, you know, pedigrees that say, oh, well, we should listen to these guys. And here we are talking about the shit that you and I are talking about. And we love this. And we know we're so tapped into it. We know it's not a speculation. This is real. Right. But well, there's many people not on that wavelength yet, bro. They're, you know, down here. Well, there's a level on there that says reason. If you haven't even reached the reason, the, the yellow line. Exactly. You have, you have to at least get to the yellow line. The line of integrity. The line of integrity. So most, most of humanity is not at the line of integrity. Not even at the line of integrity. It and can it, look back in time. And like, if we go back to the time of Buddha, which is like, you know, right. 2,500 years ago, then it's like down in the, the, you know, way down there. Yeah, down yeah. in there. And then Jesus... He came in and it, it crept up a little bit. We got to like design so, 125. You know, we just in the last, you know, I think it's like 50, 40, 50 years, we finally, as a humanity, reached that line of integrity. Yeah, exactly, dude. We've come up a little bit more. 25%, according to Hawkins. He said it's between 15 and 25 cents. He actually gave a year. He said in 1986. That's right. We got to 20%. And now, I would say, and obviously there's, he's gone, but I, you know, my guess is, bro, is like we're probably now as a species really at 250. And so we don't have far to go, right? Because all we have to get to is 400. We're like 150 points away 
from a mass wholesale global consciousness of just like, wait a minute, the oppressors, fuck them. We're not going to listen anymore. You know, we're not going to go pay our taxes. I mean, imagine if nobody's paid their taxes. Because we really don't have to. No. <laughs> we'll talk about that soon, but that's a huge story right there. Dude, that is so good. And honestly, you know, you probably remember Jordan Maxwell. He's been talking about that for a long time. And God bless his soul, he was not able to elucidate it like those guys were. And obviously, as you know, those guys are special forces guys. And they have a conduit to somebody, you know, off world, like you said, exo politically giving them this information. Again, forces of light, team light, uh, yeah. white hats who are giving them that information and how that shit was put into the ether. I mean, dude, we both already have said like that to me is proof that we're going to win. Yeah. It's just a matter of how fast do we get there and how much more suffering, quote unquote, darkness has to earth, does the earth have to endure before we recognize, because bro, I put those three videos and I haven't even finished the third video yet, but I put those up on Twitter yesterday and I literally said, if everyone on Twitter was able to watch just 15 to 20% of each of these videos, the whole world would change. Yeah. Because no one would pay their taxes anymore. I know, right? I mean, it's all a scam. Totally. All yeah. of it. Not one bit of it isn't a scam. Exactly. You know, so there, I mean, there's people that are, are not paying their taxes and they're doing it legally. So there is a legal way to actually not pay your taxes. I have friends that don't pay their taxes, you know? So yeah. If you're smart uh, enough to do that, it's awesome. And then, you know, obviously for wealthy people, you can move to Puerto Rico and you yeah. can outsource everything and create your company and pay mm -hmm. 4%. Exactly. There's always ways around it, but it's like, you know, again, as you said, they, they, they control the consciousness and by controlling the consciousness and keeping people dumbed down, you know, again, through all the bullshit adjuvants, you know, through, you know, GMO food, through endocrine disrupting chemicals, through this Netflix, which is satanic. I mean, everything that they control the global consciousness is designed, you know, again, by, as you said, Luciferian satanic beings who want us enslaved. They don't right. want us to wake up. Exactly. Yeah. And the reptilians, you know, they, they control uh, a lot of, uh, you know, our solar system yeah. or did they're being pushed back. quite. I a bit. think so. I think that, you know, there, there's a good, um, amazing guy, Shane um, Bales, you know, who calls himself the ruiner. He's written in a phenomenal blog and I've done a couple of interviews with him, but he told me that they, they left in 2017 at the end of 2017, they just gave up the ownership of this planet. But as you know, their control structure is still here, which is again, all these satanic global elite factions that do control government and they're all their own, they're all Stockholm syndrome. Yeah. And malfunctioning and all the MK ultra isn't even there anymore. And there's no like leadership. And so dude, we're watching the crumbling of their empire. That's been in existence for thousands of years. Like you said, since the fall of Atlantis. Yeah. I mean, they, they've uh, basically the generals are, are gone. They're dead or gone. So now we're, we're cleaning up the, uh, you know, the colonels, the colonels are being taken out and uh, the majors are like, you know, screaming, you know, somebody, you guys get up there and fight and the, people are like starting to back away and right. Come on, go well, to the good guy side now. Well, that, to end this show, it's been amazing. Let, you know, let me just ask you what your thoughts are on this. Do you think getting back to the Q non narrative? And again, I go back and forth, but I'm much more on the pro Q side now. Do you think that it really is going to happen where Trump gets reelected, they somehow get, you know, you know, control back of the world by mid December. Cause I just watched this the other night, the highest level Q people are saying that at the solstice, December 21st or somewhere right around there at the lowest point of the sun. And we know everything is sun, right? They are going to literally darken the, communicational infrastructure of this planet and they are going to literally show the sleepers and everybody us too, imagery of what they have been doing possibly the tribunals i mean do you think that's all bs or do you think it is potentially realistic to happen no that's definitely going to happen i thought it would have happened sooner um it has to though right michael because all these okay. people who just yeah. will not accept what we talk about have to be literally physically shown, right? Right. It's, you know, we got, we got those people who are like, it's not, it's not on the news, you know? <laughs> Sean Hannity didn't say it, <laughs> like, you know, or. 
Or, uh, I mean, you, dude, there's you, such and such cognitive dissonance. Like, I sent my family, my brothers, there's six boys and my dad, so seven guys today who are, are such asleep, and these are all very successful, you know, high-level CEOs, and I sent them that thing that I sent you, you know, this morning that shows the proof of the guy in Brussels, in Belgium, who was one of the leaders of the, you know, kind of billion rings and all of his admissions and everything. And it's statistically proven with links and articles. It's fact. And it was in 1996. And then in 2006 and bro, you send it to people and they still say, it'll never see the light of day. Or they'll say, I don't believe it. I mean, they're so not able to receive the legitimacy that people eat people, sacrifice people, and the people that are doing it are literally the leaders of the planet. They're just dissonant. They can't receive it. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, we, I, I understand because right. like I was talking about with this secret space program, people are coming up to me and say, hey, you know, you were like super, so, super warrior, super soldier. I was like, huh? Uh, you know, <laughs> a part of me was like, yeah, he's right, but uh. Uh, or she's right, but you know, I'm kind of liking, you know, this steak and this wine, you know, it's amazing, like dude. Matrix, you know, scene. So, uh, you know, we, we, we accept, you know, what we have and we are like, okay, I don't want to change anything. Cause if I, if I accept that, then I have to like my whole world shift. I, everything changes for me. So I understand that I have compassion for that. Yeah, me too. I don't have sympathy for it because basically what you're Good doing, point. you're basically playing. You can't condone it. You yeah, condone you're condoning that when you don't, you know, look at it and go, enough. Remember what I told you, Julian Ponzin, who's a guy, a very amazing spiritual mentor of mine, he literally has the comment that says, people have the right to remain asleep for long as it entertains them. That's, that's a beautiful, I, when you, sh when you sent me that, I was like, wow. I mean, that is the most profound, because again, that is telling guys like me and you that we have no right to awaken others. They can literally stay at their conscious level for as long as it entertains them. But it's like, dude, and as Robert says this, and you know, you said this on our first podcast together, it's like, there does become a point though, where not picking a side is unacceptable. Yeah. So, you know, remaining asleep, you cannot con consciously choose that position if Nibiru is coming. Right. I mean, you literally have to choose the side of a raised vibration or you are literally dealing with whatever comes to you. And if that's the end of times, you know, metaphorically, then guess what? You reboot and you stay at the same vibrational level that you refuse to get out of in the next round, right? I mean, it's that simple. It, it is. A, and that's what I was about to say the same thing. It's that simple, you know, literally that simple. Just raise your vibration. Think love. Like we keep saying, send love, you know, think love. And it's like, then it becomes who you are and you exactly. attract it then. And it's like, it cha it's changes everything. It's like, it's, I can't under, having been like, you know, that angry guy, you know, in the sure, past, sure. you know, that sure. I thinking that's the way I had to be. Uh, and now I'm at this, this other level. I'm like, I am so much more effective now. I wish me I could too. have had it back then. Oh, me too, man. Uh, why didn't they teach me this? But they don't. And you, if you don't find it on your own or you have somebody like us, you know, like, Hitting you upside right. the head. Come right. on. Right. Then, uh, it, it doesn't happen for you. So this is, this is good. You know, what we do makes a huge difference. And I'm seeing it happen. More people are waking up. And as those people wake up, they wake up more. So this is the way, you know, it happens. This is the way it works. So it's, it's really beautiful. Bro, amazing. I mean, like, it's funny because you're saying that because I just think of myself, you know, I was the same guy, you know. And now, like, when I see somebody just do something so stupid on the road and cut me off or whatever, you know, I just kind of like – you know, just keep going. And then I get up next to them at the traffic light and, you know, I look over at them and they're ready to be like, fuck you. And I'm just feeling like, Hey man, I hope you have a great day. Exactly. I mean, it's like you said, like you change that vibrational tone by your behavior and you control it. You know, and I, I used to have a friend that used to tell me that like, look, man, you could like, you know, ch exchange words with the worst person on the planet, like a heinous eight foot hulking murderer who's got, you know, a submachine gun and a battle ax in his hand and if you walk up to them and say, hey, man, I just want you to know, man, I really appreciate you. And I hope you have an amazing day. Even if they're ready to kill you, that love vibration shuts them down. And I never believed it back then, you know, because he'd always tell me this. 
And now I live it every day, just as you do it every day. And we know that it doesn't matter who you are. If you preach love, acceptance, forgiveness, courage, kindness, creativity, all those things, you cannot be thwarted. That's absolutely right. Yep. And it works, like you said. And every, everyone that I teach this, and, and people will tell me, you know, I was, I'm pretty hard-headed. And I was like, I understand. That's, that's why I'm able to teach you, because I'm hard-headed, and I know how, to, how this works. But um, they eventually get it, and they're like, I, can't, I just can't believe, you know, how, how effective this is, you know, how, being in that love vibration and what it, what it does. And the stories that I get, like people, like you are just talking about, um, being in situations that could be life or death, and they send out that love vibration and it completely changes things. And then you have the people who are like, there's no way that I will ever do that. And I'm like, okay, I know people that were like that and they're no longer here. So it's, a, it's up exactly to you. exactly right, bro. And my wife has been so amazing, just as your wife, Tracy, has been amazing to you. You know, my wife, Monica, has always told me that when I ever had bad business deals go wrong or something that just didn't work out, she would say, look, send them love. And I would be like, you, you know, just what you're saying, fuck oh, no, fuck <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's like, but it, when you get to a point again, when you evolve that yeah. it's the only answer. It is. It's, it really it's is. detachment from whatever physical nonsense happened and the recognition that like, you know what? I learned from the experience and I send you love man or light and both. And I hope that you evolve, you know, at the same rate and speed that I'm evolving. And dude, it works. Yeah. Otherwise you carry it with you. And exactly. I, I show this in a, uh, when I teach courses, sometimes I'll, I'll have somebody, what, tell, tell me a thing that's happened to you that, you know, you hold a grudge about. And they were telling me, you know, like, okay, here, hold this chair. That's that grudge. And then I start piling all this stuff on them. I'm like, okay, now, now walk with that. And they're like, they can't move. You know, I'm like, right. see, see, you're carrying this stuff. You need to let it go. Exactly. Like, you know, send it love that, let, that cuts it from you. And then it's uh it's, it's a lot easier in life. And that's what I've done with everything. And like you were just talking about, to send it love that breaks the current that keeps it attached to me, which is super important. And once you get that and you see the effect that that has on your life and how once you break that, your vibration goes up and you start to attract the things that you want in your life that you thought you could never have. And it, they have never come to you because you've been in this low vibration. That's you know? totally true, you man. There, it's so amazing. Yeah. And, and, and you, know, you get to a point where you have no enemies because you yep. can't have enemies. Right. It, it, exactly. it, it, there's just no way to have enemies because your vibration just literally repels the even thought or the concept that that person was an enemy. And I truthfully, like, I feel like I have one or two guys in my past. They're not my enemies, but I would love to be able to like reconnect and communicate with them. But you know, I've learned some people, they're just not going to get to that vibrational level where you can ever have that conversation with them. And as you already said, it's okay. And we have to just be accepting and allowing of where they stay. And they may always just be right here or right here. And we're here. And that keeps us, even though we want to have that conversation with them, it just keeps us recognizing that, hey, it's just not going to happen that way. And if the universe allows it to happen that way, that person will reach out to us when they're ready, right? It's the same thing as awareness. Yeah. And you, you keep sending them love and you'll be amazed if they have the potential of going to love because some people don't. Some people don't, right. Yeah. And that doesn't work out really well for them eventually, but, um, uh, <laughs> you know, for lack you know, of a better way to say how, it. How you sent love to uh terrorists and they're all gone. Right. So um, it's very effective. So it's, uh, they could have gone to the light, but they, you know, were in dark and they just want to stay dark and that's, that was their option. So, um, as you send this love to people, you'll see them like, you know, start to connect and change, it changes their lives. It totally does. And even if, like you said, for the bad ones that don't, you know, eventually they will come into an incarnation in a lifetime where they wake up and they figure it out. Yeah. We're all walking, you know, as Russell says, we're all walking the path back to the perfection of universal awareness or divine mind of God. So Michael, man, as always, dude, this has been so amazing. I can't wait to get these up. I'll see you again on Monday night. Um, yeah. You have any final thoughts for this amazing podcast? <clears throat> No, it's, uh, it's uh, like, it's, you know, it's always a pleasure. Glad we connected. The stuff that we're uh, revealing and we're sharing is, is reaching new levels. I, I just feel like, you know, the two of us, you know, and, and when Robert comes in too, we just like, you know, just crush some stuff out there and it's just really making an impact. Dude, I can't wait to meet you in person. I mean, I know that I've spent lifetimes probably with you and we probably have been in fucking foxholes and who knows together oh, yeah. like that, but like, you know, to physically meet, you know, beyond just this whole, um, you know, 
holographic vibrational reality, which is pretty similar. I mean, and pretty seen, I mean, pretty, pretty real anyway. Cause like I said, I sent your energy, you sent my energy, but man, I appreciate you, you know, divinely humbly. I, I send you tremendous love and light, you know, of course your wife too. And hopefully and when, you know, when all this craziness shakes out, you know, we'll all get together and go on some sort of insane, you know, exotic oh. vac vacation or destination. Yeah. yeah. Like eight yeah. months. And I, you know, I'll just it's can't. Really cool. Absolutely. I mean, I, I hope because I'll be turning 50 on February 24th next year. I hope that the badness or the darkness is behind us and we'll be able to organize that like sometime in January and it'll be the most amazing party ever. <laughs> God, that, would be, that would be huge. That sounds like a good plan. Yeah, cool. man, for sure, man. Well, listen, dude, um, as always, let me just end the show by saying please to my um, audience, support the amazing works of Michael. Um, what's the easiest way for people to uh, coach with you and work with you real quick? Uh, my website is unleashing-intuition1.teachable.com. Right. Yeah. And, I, and I'll promote that in there. And I think they actually have it in the podcast. And, so, and, and like I've already said, like you've done an amazing job of creating courses, which I have to follow in your footsteps because that's one thing I haven't done. I have all these amazing books and I have no courses at all yet, but that's coming. So uh, again, you guys support Michael, go to his website, coach with him, buy some of his amazing online products. And remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see you guys in a week. <laughs>